This is a Fox News alert. After nine days of testimony and dozens of witnesses, the prosecution has just rested its case in the George Zimmerman murder trial. The state wound down its arguments with the highly anticipated testimony from the mother of victim Trayvon Martin, along with his brother today. They both said it was the unarmed teen who was screaming for help on 911 calls recorded minutes before Trayvon was shot to death, not Zimmerman, as the defense alleges. Listen. I can't see him. I don't want to go out there. I don't know what's going on. So they're sending. So you think he's yelling help? Yes. All right. What is your number? <laughs> There's gunshots. You just heard gunshots? Yes. Ma'am, that screaming or yelling, do you recognize that? Yes. And who do you recognize that to be, ma'am? Trayvon Benjamin Martin. You had talked to a reporter about um, whose voice it may have been, correct? Yes. And you told that reporter, Gio Benitez, on March 31st of 2012 um, that you weren't sure, correct? Yes. Do you now believe it's Trayvon Martin's voice yelling for help on the tape? Yes. Okay, and so that was the testimony that they heard today. Very dramatic testimony from the mother and from the brother of Trayvon Martin. This was key. It was pivotal to the case for the prosecution. They were trying to prove that this was, in fact, the case where the defendant acted with malice towards the victim, Trayvon Martin. That Trayvon Martin was helpless, defenseless, was yelling for help as he was murdered by George Zimmerman. That is the prosecution's case. We also saw moments ago in that courtroom, Mark O'Mara conclude his arguments, a judgment for acquittal that was denied by Judge Nelson in that courtroom. The next thing that happened was the defense decided to proceed with its case after the prosecution rested. And now you're looking at that courtroom live in Sanford, Florida, where the mother of George Zimmerman is on the stand testifying. A bit of a surprise move by the defense that they would start. It's Friday at 5 o'clock, and here we have the mother, one mother after the next, testifying in this case. Tremendous emotion in that courtroom for the people that are watching the trial and for the six women that will decide the fate of George Zimmerman. All right, so, uh, Bob, I'm going to begin with you. I mean, this, uh, to me, as a former prosecutor, is, a, is an emotional ploy, a tug at the heart, when you have the prosecution put the mother of the victim on the stand as you have that 911 call playing, and she identified the voice of her son. And remember, we had the expert who said he couldn't identify right. who it was, right. but someone who knew the person on that call would be better suited to make that determination. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, I, I assume that it's going to be how credible she appears to the jury. I mean, that's, uh, and how credible the brother uh, appears to the jury. And I think that's probably what it's all about. I still get back to the point, though. If this guy, Zimmerman, was in such uh, danger, he had a few cuts on his head. I mean, you don't take a gun and shoot a guy because he happens to hit you in the head. I mean, I, I just, I, I think he's a wuss. And you're basing think that he's because a wuss? the yes. medical examiner said that the injuries were not substantial, that Correct. they were more minimal in nature on um, right. the defendant. I think what, but, but Bob raises an interesting point, or actually his opinion is no, almost no different then your opinion was, say, a year ago or a year and a half, half an ago when the, when the crime first came to the nation's conscious, uh, which means that it's kind of a fallacy that when you're watching a case that you actually learn anything. <laughs> because people will stick to their opinions when, when they, from, when, from when it began, and they won't change their mind. And so what it comes down to, why are we watching something? Well, there are 13,000 murders committed every year. Why this one? Because it fulfills two two promises that the media like. You have a racially charged component, and you have guns as a defense, which the media doesn't like, but seen as immoral. So the televised trial, in a way, becomes a self-fulfilling self -fulfilling prophecy where people are watching it because the networks designated this case as the one to air after giving it priority, which I actively resist the proportion of racially charged content in my life because it's done to suggest that it's the norm. Well, I was watching it very intensely today, and I hadn't really followed the trial that closely throughout the last couple of weeks, but a few major pivot points stuck out to me. Just looking at it peripherally, you have the Rachel Jantel woman. She made a big impact. You know, she couldn't read cursive. She could barely speak English. That was a
big moment. Then you had the guy that was the eyewitness. He said he saw him MMA style on top of him wailing down blows. And then you had that whole Skype controversy where everything broke loose and there was a lot of, you know, discordance with the testimony of the professor. And I think all those things looked really bad for the prosecution. Mm -hmm. So then today they bring in the mom. Mm -hmm. And it was an incredibly emotional piece of testimony. And I thought they were going to end with the mother mm -hmm. and really seal the deal there. But they didn't. They brought in the medical examiner, who I thought started doing really well at first because he talked about how Zimmerman pulled the trigger, bullet in the heart, pierced his heart, he bled out and died and could have suffered from one to ten yes. minutes. Mm -hmm. But yes. then, oh. let me finish, let me okay, finish. Please. But then the defense comes on and shreds the medical examiner. Yeah. Why did he say that? Made him look incompetent. He didn't know what the protocol was for his own office, didn't take a picture of the hands, didn't know where the fingernails were, didn't take a picture of the fingernails, used the same swab to swipe every single finger on the hand, and he was defensive, combative, and did not come off that well, in my I, opinion. I just want to say one thing. I'm impressed with what you know about this. I, I mean, did you have another life besides this? I mean, anybody <laughs> could figure out all that. I knew I was coming on today. I brushed up on Zimmerman okay. just for you, Bob. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, going Danny? off of, of what Bob said about bringing it, the prosecution bringing in witnesses to see how credible they are, after the case that the prosecution has had, I think bringing in Trayvon Martin's mother brought some of that credibility back. And we saw a lot of heavy details today. We saw um, we, they put up the mother in the prosecution and the medical examiner to leave that last vision um, in, in the mind of the jury. And now I think with the defense bringing on George Zimmerman's mother, they want to make sure that people understand that George Zimmerman is someone's son too. Mm -hmm. And so they have to you know, make that image equal right. with the one that they've had with Trey.